Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this short video on how to install VirtualBox and the ECE3311 disk image that you'll be using in order to develop uh, your Python code, um, writing it, evaluating it, uh, including all the packages and libraries that you'll need in, uh, for this course. Um, the rationale for in using VirtualBox, which is uh, referred to as a, vir a virtual machine, uh, as well as distributing a common image across the entire class is very simple. Um, I really want to avoid all of you installing differently Python across different machines and different setups, different dependencies that might vary from one another, because then it makes it very difficult uh, for folks to get the exact same predictable answer at the end of the day, right? Like the last thing we want is this class to become um, a programming course and not a communications course, right? So let me give a little bit of insight about how a virtual machine works before we actually proceed with the details of doing this, okay? So what a virtual machine is, is it's an emulator that works within um, an operating system and runs uh, an, an operating system within itself, okay? So, you know, there are a number of ways of running two operating systems, right? Um, there might be others, but actually there are three. Let's say three ways of running two OSs. Okay, fine. OSs, yeah. Like I'm not sure if that's proper, the, the right way of saying it in plural. So number one, have two PCs. <laughs> you, know, you have box number one, uh, and that could be OS number one. And you have box number two, and that runs num uh, OS number two. This has pros and cons. Um, pros is uh, you, you, you the installation is relatively simple, and you each OS gets the maximum, um, maximum utilization resources off of each PC. That's awesome. Cons, you have to get two computers, uses up twice as much desk space, uses up twice as much power. Uh, it's kind of cumbersome. Two, dual boot. This is kind of nice because you have the same PC, okay? And you select at boot up uh, whether you want OS number one or OS number two. So pros, one PC, okay? And the operating system you choose to run on that PC is gonna have maximum access to the resources of that PC. Downside, it's like, oh, I need to use this operating system number two and I'm on operating, number, operating system number one, gotta reboot the computer and then start off in the other operating system. Super, super duper big nuisance, right? It's a pain in the butt. Plus the installation is kind of tricky, especially if you have one operating system already there and you didn't partition your hard disk, that's a pain in the butt to repartition your hard disk to install the second OS. So not good. And I don't want people to waste your time doing dual boot. So this is number three is what we're gonna do. Uh, so that's the virtual machine. Machine. So what it is, is an OS within an OS. OS number one. Oh, wow, I just need to use OS number two just for a short amount of time. Oh, okay, there you go. OS number two. So what happens is you have this software called a virtual machine, okay? And what it does is it's a software emulation of a, of a computer that you install OS number two on top of. So from the viewpoint of OS number two, it's happily installed on a computer that's being emulated by a software uh, that is your virtual machine that runs in OS number one. Wonderful. So what's the pros? Super convenient. You just have to install a second operating system in the virtual machine within OS number one, and you can have your cake and eat it too. Bad? bad the bad thing about this? Slow. Because OS number two now needs to share resources with OS number one, also because you're emulating hardware. You're not actually running that OS number two on actual hardware. It's not going to be as fast. So that's kind of like the you know, pros and cons of each situation. But honestly, for this course, 
what this solution is actually good enough. So we're going to go with this. It's a lot easier, right? So the VM that we're going to be using for this course, it's called VirtualBox. It's, uh, it's produced by Oracle. It's distributed by Oracle and is essentially, uh, you know, very convenient, widely used across multiple platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It also runs on Solaris, but um, not many people still use Solaris. So let's, let's get started. Let's actually install VirtualBox on this computer. Okay, so where do you get VirtualBox? Well, you go to the internet. So if you go to um, you know, Google and you put in VirtualBox, you're probably gonna get the first or second link is gonna be uh, to www.virtualbox.org. Then what you wanna do is you wanna click Downloads going to take you to downloads is then if you're running a Windows computer you click Windows host if it's Mac OS you click on Mac OS host Linux and then what I mentioned about Solaris mm. so I'm on a Windows computer it's 64 bit so I click on Windows it's going to ask me to download this exe file I say sure it's downloading and once it's finished downloading I'm going to run it I'm going to execute this and what it's going to do is it's going to install software just like everything else. But it's going, to, it's going to need some permissions. It's going to need access to your hardware because some of the emulation that this virtual machine is going to do, this virtual box, is going to be, it's, going to, it's still going to need access to some of the hardware resources, especially your Ethernet card. Because what it's going to do is your second OS inside the virtual machine is going to bridge through that, that, that emulated Ethernet adapter to your actual one in order to get network connectivity, all right? So let's see, is it done downloading? Yay, it is. So I click on that and it's gonna get ready. I'm gonna say next, I'm gonna choose the default setup. And the only thing I hate is when stuff gets in, um, shortcuts on my desktop, I hate that. So I'm gonna get rid, but otherwise everything else I'm gonna keep. See, there's that network interface warning. So it's gonna to have to bridge to your network interface, in which case it's gonna do some turning off and turning on. So just heads up. So you say yes, and you go install. And so it's gonna chug along, and you're gonna to have to click yes somewhere. It's gonna do some registry configuration. It's gonna copy new files. It's gonna do all that fun stuff. And at the end of the day, what hopefully, fingers crossed, you're gonna get is you're gonna get VirtualBox installed. So it's done, you say finish, and you say run, and magically what's gonna happen is somewhere, ah, uh, there we go. This is what you should be getting at the end of the day. This is VirtualBox 6.1.16, right? Now, um, in this class, we're gonna distribute the ECE3311 image, disk image. It's not, it's not a, a distro, right? It's not a distribution of Linux or anything like that. It is a Linux, but it is Linux. In, in fact, it's gonna be Ubuntu 20.04.1, right? 64-bit distribution. But it's the operating system, right? Uh, plus everything that we installed on it. And what we did is we took that installation. That, like imagine if I were to take your hard disk with that OS installed, and say, okay, great. I'm gonna take this image of that thing. I'm gonna create the VDI file. Here is an example of a VDI file. It's a compressed version. So first of all, I've got to extract it. And I'm going to extract it here on desktop because that's what silly folks do like me. Now, as it's extracted, uh, what it's gonna do is gonna produce this really big file. It's actually gonna be eight gigabytes in size. And what you're gonna do is once it creates a VDI file, uh, what you're gonna, the next step is you're gonna take a virtual box and you're gonna proceed with new. So I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. So let's say I'm gonna create something called three, ECE3311 and in my directory, so C users, Alex W, virtual box VMs. 
This is where the virtual machines are hosted. You can actually more than just one virtual machine. Virtual box can handle it all, but you can only run one at a time. Well, maybe you can, but you have to be very careful that you don't run out of resources because you're running a bunch of operating systems with an operating system and they're all using resources. You might, uh, you might run out of it and it's gonna choke the computer. Now, you're gonna have to select the operating system. As I mentioned, this is Ubuntu. So first of all, like, you know, uh, what's available to VirtualBox is you can, you can run Windows within Windows, but eh. uh, Linux, Solaris, uh, BSD, right? Um, and then a variety of other uh, guys. We're gonna choose Linux that, because that's what, um, that's what we did the ECE3311 image in. Now, it's not Oracle. Uh, and there's a variety of different Linux distros. We did this in Ubuntu um, and in particular 64-bit version of Ubuntu. So say, okay, great. Now, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna select the appropriate amount of memory. So very important. So if you don't have enough memory, don't exceed the amount of memory. So, I, so what do I mean? So right now, uh, it, I would say in order to run uh, Ubuntu 20.04.1, right, the, the ECE3311 disk image, uh, I would say use four gigs of RAM. So that's 4096 megabytes. If your computer has 4096 megabytes, not a good idea because this is going to basically take, it's going to reserve, 40, virtual box is going to reserve 4096 uh, megabytes of RAM on your computer which means if you have 4096 megabytes of RAM total on your computer, nothing else is gonna have access to it, your computer's gonna crash. So that's why you want to take, um, uh, you, want, you want to, uh, let's say if you're in that situation, you might wanna crank it down maybe to two gigabytes. So then you say next. And this is now where you use the, uh, the existing virtual hard disk file. So I just, Finish compressing, uncompressing. And this is, uh, let's see, properties. This is the .bdi file I've been talking about. Okay, great. So now what I do is I go to use an existing hard disk file. I click there. I go to add. Go to desktop. Go to VDI. Click on that guy. Say open. Great. Now I say choose. Great. Now I click create. Ah, awesome. So now here's my ECE3311 um, uh, operating system. It's, and you can see there's some useful things here. So first of all, <clears throat> the way I installed it, base image, four gigs. You're going to need four gigs. So again, VirtualBox may not work for you if you don't have four gigs of RAM on your computer. Hopefully you have more, right? Um, what else? Uh, 64 bits, right? And um, you know, and there, there's a, and what happens is there's a lot of configurations when we created this operating system, when we installed it. Um, so uh, let's see, what else is there? Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, it's 10, we, like, we assumed a 10 gigabyte hard disk but again, that's gonna be virtual. So make sure that you have a hard disk uh, on your computer that you're gonna be hosting this that has at least 10 gigabytes of free space. So what you need is enough RAM to comfortably accommodate four gigs of RAM being used by VirtualBox to run this thing. So if you have eight gigs of RAM, imagine four of that is gonna to go to this. 10 gigabytes of hard disk space to run this image, right? Um, and then again, the Ethernet adapter and everything that's going to be bridged and everything. So now what you do is let's start it. Start. And it's thinking. So now what happens is check it out. It's like, okay, big deal. And what it's going to do, it's going to look exactly as though Ubuntu is running, right? So Ubuntu is, it's going to be starting up.
and then hopefully in a few seconds. And, and what happens is there's a few indicators here. So this guy here, that's your SATA hard disk, right? So you can see the activity of it accessing it. And here's the network activity indicator as well, right? And there's a few other things that you might want to check out. Now, um, because it's an image uh, and it copied everything, that includes um, uh, the user account. And let me think, what is it? I am hoping I remember it. Uh, A, B, C, one, two, three, four. God, I hope I got the right one. Ah! Okay. Uh, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. Shucks. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure this out. But basically, you, 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 you like this is the password is gonna be circulated to the class. No, this is very embarrassing. But this is how you run. You install VirtualBox. You take the virtual disk image that we, we're going to be distributing to the class. You install it in VirtualBox, and then you run it. But effectively, what you folks see here, this is OS, the operating system number two, that's being run within your native, your host operating system. Ah, see, now, it's, now I'm really wondering what the heck is the opera? Uh, the, like, I'm wondering if it's like password, but no. No, that would be too easy. Um, but actually, no, okay, I'm giving up. So hopefully that provides some insight. And then once, once I can figure out what the password is, I'm going to be sending it out to the class so you can all log in. And what you're going to see is for everybody, the same common development environment with the same version of Python and everything else installed so that we do less of the debugging of the operating system and more of the communication stuff that all of you are interested in this class. So hopefully this video will help you guide through the installation process of this disk image. And um, yeah, like you know, then we can start programming in Python. So with that, uh, hopefully you all found this useful and definitely send me an email or Slack message if you have any questions me or Karthik. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye.